Welcome to Drinks Coach. Just checking it started. Welcome to Drinks Coach. Uh, another winter lineup. Trying to kind of collect together all the wonderfulness that people have been sending me. The love they've spread in alcohol form. This is a big one, right? So I don't know. I'm going to chomp through this. I won't make it overcomplicated for most of our readers. Those people out there that know these products, they'll know much more than I do in most cases. Um, Vine Sack or lowercase, if you want to talk to me about the show, or even Drinks Coach UK or lowercase one word. You're watching Drinks Coach UK on YouTube. Uh, press the bell, ring ding ding, get notifications of more shows. I am trying to do a show every day. Between uh, now until New Year's Eve, uh, we'll see how, what other stuff I've got lying around the house. Uh, I'll probably end up doing Fallen Mason pickled Brussels sprouts, which you can just see over there. So um, I thought it'd be fun going, well, you know, everyone's talking about gin. Everyone's talking about rum. Uh, Christmas is all about the cognac. Uh, don't get me wrong. I like a bit of cognac. Ooh. That's how I roll. Pale and dry, Delamain Cognac. A Mensador, thank you very much for passing this to me. It was driven by a courier twice from Hertfordshire, which is a long, long way away, so I could have a quarter bottle of this stunning uh, cognac, which is a cognac my father let me try when I was way too young, when I got into a very posh school, and he was very proud of me. He said, you're a young man now, you should try really good cognac. And the, the two cognacs my father used to drink was Hein Antique, which is a legend, and also Delamain, or Delmar Pale and Dry, now known as Delamain XO. Just showing you that I do like cognac. But this show is about other distillates. What about the rest? What about the ones that time forgot? Or what about the ones that people aren't talking about? So um, here are largely drinks which are, I think, seen as not very fashionable. But... In some cases, you're dead wrong. Some of these white things are very fashionable. We'll start off with this. Thank you very much. I did a, a, a video um, kind of present. I had a video presentation, which I attended uh, not long ago. This is Saint Remy French Brandy Extra Old XO. I don't know how ex old Extra Old is. It's probably the one question I should have asked, which I didn't. But I think it's probably between seven and ten years. Um, this is made in the Loire. It's a brandy. All right, let's talk about brandy quickly. France is famous for its brandies. You have cognac. Cognac is from the Charente, north of Bordeaux, south of the Loire. And Charente is where cognac comes from. It is largely seen to be the world's finest and most refined grape brandy. Very hard to question that. You've also got south of Bordeaux, along the Pyrenees um, border of Spain, you have Gascony. Uh, some of it's in Pays Basque the Basque country, which, which kind of straddles the Spanish and French border. But down there, you have Armagnac. And Armagnac is the other grape-based brandy which is revered across France. It was seen very much as the artisanal choice, but then came along and is now very strongly a competitor in terms of people's um, perceptions of quality. It may not be as refined, but it has more power. It's effortlessly complex. Um, I think it shows itself more interesting when it was young, when it's younger than cognac. Cognac needs longer to show its real depth of character. Um, but there's a third, what they call eau de vie brandy in France, which is highly revered. And we have two right here. Calvados. That's right. Not made from grapes, made from cider apples, effectively. So we have two Calvadoses, two apple brandies here. Uh, and whenever I taste Calvados, I always think... I think I'd rather drink that. I really do think that because it's not something I drink every day and it is magical in the same way if you've been watching my Welsh cider updates. Cider, if it's made naturally and properly, has every bit as broad a reach of flavours as grape-based drinks. Cider and wine, you know, we just have, we just have to learn to appreciate it more. So, going back to this, this is a grape brandy. It's not a cognac. It's not an Armagnac, it's certainly not a Calvados, but it is a brandy, uh, which is made the same way. It's known to be made the same way as those others. Um, this is made from, I believe, up to 30, 32 different grape varieties. It's made in the Loire. Some of the um, the, the grapes they use um, is, a, is, a, is a grape variety called Melon de Bourgogne, which is the same, same grape variety that you use to make Muscadet, which is a crisp, zingy, briny, wonderful white wine from the Loire, which is now made exceptionally well, although it was a laughing stock back in the 70s, and goes very well with fish. But it, it works out that um, the varieties that make cognac 
apparently look are quite similar. Fol, Bl Fol Blanche particularly um, has a lot of similarities to, um, or Uni Blanc has similarities to Milan de Bourgogne. So let's have a look at this. This is um, uh, darker than you'd expect uh, um, other brandies of this age to be in France, from a finer source, if you like. It's got a lovely, complex, very fruit-forward nose. It's packed with fruit. This is made, as I said, from grapes from lots of different places and lots of different grape varieties, which then of itself creates an orchestral complexity within the drink. Uh, even if you buy the cheaper expressions of San Remy, um, they're pretty interesting. Um, this was um, made for the first time at the end of the last century, uh, 1886 or something like that. And I understand that San, Mer San Remy, the name San Remy, um, has the same source as the name Remy Martin, as in Remy Martin Cognac. Uh, so this has been made for well over 100 years, put, approaching 130, 140 years. Now listen, this is, this is a bottle of old brandy. Anything over five years old is pretty old. Let's say this is 10 years old. So you'd be allowed to sell that as an XO if it was a cognac. It's delicious. It's balanced. It's rounded. It's not quite as characterful and in-your-face expressive as, say, Armagnac is, which actually means it lends itself much better to blending and mixing. So it's a terrific brandy if you want to make a brandy sidecar or you want to make other um, cocktails. It probably makes a very good brandy old-fashioned. Um, I made a very nice espresso martini when um, the people at San Remy uh, presented to me on Zoom a couple of weeks ago. I made a fantastic drink. Um, what can I say? Brilliant. But the best bit I haven't told you yet. £22. £22 for a whole bottle of really good brandy. And this is really good brandy. You can buy a VS Cognac for maybe five to ten pounds more than that i just think it offers exceptional value for money and if you want everyday brandy and you're not a ponce i strongly recommend you look this stuff up brandy bargain of christmas there you go moving on to something a bit more expensive but look how sexy that is wee wah woo wah look at that it's got this beautiful black top it's like Pol Polaroid sun sunglasses. It's like the glasses that Lee Major, six million dollar man, used to wear. In the bottom of this beautiful, beautiful packaging is some more Eau de V. Let's have a look at this colour. It's actually quite elegant in colour. This is called Isabel Regina, Queen Isabel. One of the things that I've always loved. Um, is the brandies they make in the region of Sherry in Jerez in Spain. Um, what I've loved more than anything else is they're quite dark and quite, because they've been aged in old sherry barrels, they have lots of sherry flavour, which you know, you, I can never get enough of. Um, and they were cheap. Uh, and suddenly I blink and I missed it, but I blink and then suddenly Cardinal Mendoza, for example, which is a very, very good um, uh, example, or... Um, uh, Grand Duque de Alba is another regular example of really good Brandy de Jerez. They went from like £18 to 50 without me noticing. Um, and now they're very expensive. This, um, I think, is relatively new to market. It's from a range of very sophisticated brands and is a part of the brand stable that brought you Gin Mare Gin, which is a beautiful gin with black olives and rosemary and all sorts of interesting Mediterranean aromatics in it, which makes it a killer snapper option if you're going to make a bloody mary use that gin no vodka it required um absolutely delicious but this packaging's amazing thanks abs abby um who's responsible for these drinks um were very kindly poured some into a bottle for me to take back to my flat so i could tell you all about it it's about 50 quid though no pissing around this is quite serious but it's a blend of brandy de Jerez, of french brandies of cognac and then they've been aged now, to quote one of the most entertaining and most um, entrepreneurial men in the, our entire industry, the great James J. Goodman of London Cocktail Club Cocktail Group, he said, yeah, but if you put anything in PX casks, which I should explain in a moment, that's cheating. <laughs> PX is the darkest grape variety, the grape variety that produces the sweetest sherries, the super sweet sherries. If you're going to make cream sherry, you add 10% PX, or what we call Pedro Ximenez, into a normal dry sherry, and you end up with a sweet sherry, because it's so super sweet, 10% will do the trick, and it'll end up with a very, very sweet wine. You can, then, you can actually drink now PX on its own, 
And it's, I don't think it's that pleasant, to be honest, uh, but I will pour it over ice cream. I will pour it over a cafe affogato. I will glaze my pork ribs with it. It's absolutely amazing in the kitchen and also in other cocktails and drinks. It's a phenomenal thing. Um, but it has this incredible deep black molasses flavor, muscovado sugar flavor, and dates and coffee, which is extraordinary. So what they've done is they've made this mix of really premium brandies, put it into PX barrels for a little while, and this is what you've got. And I tell you, I swear, I've never tried this before. So let's see what it's like. <laughs> JJ's right, you know. If you put anything, it's like if you get any fruit you don't like very much, and then you dip it in toffee and call it a toffee apple or a toffee banana, even though like apples are bananas, you're gonna you're gonna bloody eat it, aren't you? And that's kind of what PX barrels do to spirits. Okay. It's perfumed. You've got a really lovely, youthful lift of eau de vie. Falling on to the more sherry like characteristics, it's a bit more rancio. And then you taste the wood. You would. It's creamy, butterscotchy cedar. Then you taste the figs. <laughs> puts a smile on your face. Look, a, a bottle that sexy. Fifty pounds, giving you the pleasure of both sherry, branded hereth, and cognac all at the same time. Should work in a brothel. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. I, was, I, can't, I can't thank you enough. Thank you very, very much. That's a good haul. Um, that's, that's a real drink. Um, and uh, yeah, five quid. So £22, if you're like me and locked down. Um, if you're a bit more bling, I do strongly recommend you try that. Um, I, I will admit that some other drinks have more finesse. But it's not short on stories. Absolutely amazing. Oh, now I've got a taste of Toblerone in the mouth. I mean, bloody Toblerone. What could be more holiday than that? If everything tasted of Toblerone, then pff, the world would be at peace. There'd be no war. Okay, so, moving on. Gavin. Mr. Gavin from Anotria, from, sorry, Anotria. I'll start again. Gavin. Gavin from Emporia Brands. Yes, yeah, sorry, I got it right the second time. Gavin, you're a very clever man and a charming man and a lovely man. And I've still got loads of stuff that you sent me that I'm going to do, man. Um, aperitivos, and fruit-based bitters and everything come later on next week after Christmas um, because people need to slow run into that, I think. Um, but there's some lovely drinks there. Uh, not strong, wonderfully complex drinks. I can see them all on the floor. I'm looking at the mezzo, mezzo, uh, rancanca. Oh, some amazing things down there. But let's go to the, one of the really, really sexy things he gave me, which is, I said, have you got any Calvados? Knowing full well that you represent Pear Magloire, which must be the largest Calvados brand there is. And he went, um, it'd be great if you could show it because next year they're 200 years old. That's right. Next year, 200 years old. They were based, They were formed in 1821. Next year, 2021. Whatever party you were having, Gav, I better get invited. And Emma, too. We'll bring the hip hop. OK, so this is Per Magloire, VSOP Calvados. This is from the Pay Doge part of Calvados. The Cal Calvados is in Norm or the Calvados region, the Apple Brandy region. Um, is is in Normandy in 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 France and uh, it's kind of broken up into little bits. This um, is, I suppose, a really really good way for people to learn what Calvados tastes like before you go the full heroin, which is the next one, uh, considerably more expensive. Um, but Pear Magloire does do some extraordinary. Um, more aged and higher expressions. But look, this is a, a, a 35 cl bottle, a half bottle. I think you can pay, buy a whole bottle of this for £36. And for proper Calvados, that's not money. That's not a lot of money. Jesus, it's the same price as a, a bottle of whiskey. And actually, frankly, it's a lot harder to make well. Um, so this is aged for at least four years. Uh, hence VSOP, very special old pale. It's something that is um, also attributable to cognac and everything else. So anything over four or five years for Armagnac and cognac, roughly, um, is called VSOP. Now, what does it smell like? Yeah. It's got um, a, a, quite a strong volatility, but cider's like that. There's quite a lot of ethyl alcohol in the in the drink, but then there's some ethanoic acid. There's a bit of spice, a bit of high tone. I mean, for want of a better description, it's slightly like a fruit vinegar in some ways, but I like that. That's, that's what cider's all about, right? then you can smell the apples. You can smell apples, and they are definitely French apples. 
when you drink French cider, cidre boucher or Normandy cider, and then you taste English cider, you go, well, that's obviously bloody English because it tastes of English apples. France is the same. And some of the great, great, great cider apples that we revere in this country, Hereford Red Streak, um, uh, just caught on the hop there. I'm trying to think of other ones that are really famous. Um, they're pepinades. They're pippin apples, which started off in France anyway. They're, they're originally French apples that were brought to the UK, the UK, to England back in probably medieval and, and middle age times and have cross pollinated other apples and we've ended up with our own pippins like Cox's orange pippin. Imagine that the most revered English eating apple is actually a French species. Uh, pepinade means full of seeds. There you go. So thanks Gav. I feel like putting on Christmas in Hollis by Randy MC now because that's the only thing to do. All right, but just going other end because my wife likes this style of Calvados a lot. She likes smooth, brandy-like Calvados. This is Le Morton. Le Morton is one of the legends, one of the great, great legends of, of Calvados, one of the families. And there are seven of them that are kind of revered by many people. And... Um, Without putting too too fine a point on it, this is from the from these small kind of like Grand Cru of apples called Dom Fronte. This is a seven to eight year old Calvados. Uh, the next one up from this is a ten year old, which is already about sixty or seventy pounds. They go up into the hundreds of pounds. This is um, a generous donation by again, thank you Annabelle from Whiskey Exchange. Um, but I just want people to know that if you want to. Um, be beaten up with crab apples and die in a vat of cider. Um, having a sip of this is largely the same thing. So um, let's have a look at the colour. It's a bit deeper in colour than the uh, the uh, Père Magloire. It makes my eyes burn slightly, but I think that's the point. Woo! Okay, what's the strength of this stuff? 40%, they're the same. This is more refined. This is louder. Um, this is Nigel Tufnell. This is 11. Distillé au feu de bois, vieille en feu de chêne. It's actually distilled over a wood fire and it's been aged in wooden, in oak casks. Oh. Delayed reaction there. Wow, wee, wow, wee, wow. Love the label. Brilliant. That very clearly, these guys make better drinks than this. I just wanted to show you something which was exceptionally affordable. That's absolutely stunning. If you're not, you, you, you don't mind knocking forty quid around on some apple brandy plus, then Le Morton is someone you really ought to consider. Um, the other person I absolutely adore, who also makes a French gin called Le Gin, is Christian Drouin, who I met. He's quite a sad fellow largely but I met him at um, uh, at uh, Provine which is the world's largest drinks fair in Dusseldorf about four years ago and he took me through his range and um, again it's another expression same intensity of apple as this but more refined more uh, but money 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 so well done Gav thank you very much Whiskey Exchange well done Gav what want to now yeah, well, I didn't want to like lose that. Look, we've talked about... I even showed you a cognac. We've talked about Calvados. It would be incredibly unfair if I didn't mention Comte de Lovia as well. Comte de Lovia is one of my... Well, no. no, I lie, Gavin. This is my favourite producer of Armagnac. Uh, this is an Armagnac, so it's from the Gascony area. Um, it's made then, therefore, from uh, Vol Blanche, from Colombar, possibly. Uh, and uh, I think they're led to use Baco as well. I'm not sure... Uh, I'm just gibbering right now. Um, but this is their entry level, non chill filtered, natural Armagnac. Now, what's the difference between Armagnac and Cognac? Well, it's made from slightly different varieties, it's made in a slightly different climate, but also the still itself is different. They call the still a, an alambic, which, without going to too fine a point and detail, because we don't have the time really here, we're nearly at 20 minutes already. It's, um, it brings out a lot more of the, of the character. Uh, and 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 savagery is probably the wrong word because this is such an elegant drink. Uh, it brings out the real kind of edges. It's kind of like a truth drug um, for the grapes, and you end up with 
a beautiful eau de vie, which is delicate, light. This is kind of, uh, I think this is from four to seven years old, maybe a little bit older. So this could be sold, I mean, even maybe seven to ten. I can't remember. Um, Gao, I didn't look at your, your presentation, your spreadsheet, um, because I wanted to have the full entertainment package. Just feel it in my mouth and all over. And by the way, those people watching, uh, Gavin... Um, Gavin, Gavin McGoo, as he's known on uh, Facebook, um, has an exceptional taste in loud dance music, as my wife does too. They're altogether slightly too friendly with each other. Um, but uh, I just want to say thank you very much, Gavin, for giving me this, because people don't know that they can buy proper, proper Armagnac for under £30. I think that this is uh, on Whiskey Exchange or Master of Malt, can't remember which one, about £28. Okay, And I'm pouring it in a proper French eau de vie glass. Flowers, lilies, peach. Leaves, apple leaves, I don't know, just treat, fruitiness to it. The wood is so well handled in that drink. Oh my God, that's amazing. And that's basic. This is basic bitch Armagnac from a producer which I highly respect. And there's nothing basic about it whatsoever. What could I say? But if you want to buy Armagnac, I think you can still buy this with next day delivery if you hurry up or just drink a whole bottle of this on Christmas Day going, <laughs> tier four, oh my God. <laughs> When's the darts on? Something like that. Okay, so I don't know what to do with this. And you're probably wondering why it's on this particular show. Johnny, I promised you I'd put this on before Christmas. Johnny Hunter, one of the most beautiful, warm, gorgeous men I know in the wine trade. He used to work as a basically a Christmas kind of assistant shelf stacker in an Obbins in Alton, back in Hampshire, when I was the assistant manager there. And uh, he then went on to become very senior at Perno Rica, one of the largest retailers of wine and spirits in this country. And is now kind of like big, um, big honcho at this. One gin, right? He's not. He doesn't make it. She makes it. I can't remember. God, I'm embarrassed. Um, well done, you darling. I can't remember bloody your name. I've been caught on the hop. But Johnny sent me a bottle of this. He promised it. This is one gin, which famously has decided to adopt sage as its key botanical. I don't know how I've managed to keep the tiniest bits left, but this is sage and apple. This is kind of like a sweeter style. It's like an old Tom style of gin. It's wonderful. But this is the gin gin of gin. Now, people that need water holes drilled and stuff like that, and people that are in trouble all over the world, whenever you buy this, their life gets a little bit better. A considerable amount of money from the profits of this drink, go to helping people um, to get clean water to drink. But you'll see they always say sage on it because sage is their key botanical. And I went, mm, I don't even like sage very much until I tried it. I went, ooh, it makes a killer, killer martini, I've got to say. So what they've done with this, for 36 quid, in a half litre bottle, they rested this in a gin barrel, uh, in a ruby port barrel. Put it there. Put it, put, it, put it there. Okay, just so everyone can see. Lovely butterfly in the middle. Port barrel rested gin. I don't know where to put this because it, it it's like a whiskey. It's a drink that's been rested in wood. And uh, when I tasted this, <laughs> I say tasted. Uh, when I got shit faced on this the other night watching some cool film, I can't which one it was. I remember thinking he deserves to have this put into a digestive class rather than just talking about another gin. I have purposely not done a gin roundup this Christmas because, oh, uh, <laughs> but wow, what a drink. What a fucking drink. Right, so you can smell the sage like it's fresh sage. Like um, I'm looking forward to having some roast pork on New Year's Day, pork belly, sage and goose, homa, homa, very nice together. It's got a sweetness that comes through. It's 43% by volume, so it's kind of an export-ish strength. Then you've got the sweetness of the barrel. You've got a little bit of tannin. This is, sits much better on the whiskey shelf than the gin shelf. 
Oh God, I'm so glad I've still got a bit left. Uh, I wish I hadn't gone so hard at it. Anyway, I discovered something. It's mixable as well. A little cheeky bit of ice. Cheeky bit of Merchant Hearts hibiscus tonic. And it tastes like you just spent 15 quid in the Savoy. Oh, I love that together. It's so good. There you go. See you next time, right? Next time. Thank you.